experiment time. Today we're going to experiment with extreme hydration. I'm going to make three doughs with 90, 95, and 100% hydration and see how it turns out. Holy moly. Hi, I'm Soon and I'm a food geek. Today I'm making three different doughs, all the same size but with different hydrations. If you're not sure what hydration is or how to calculate it, you should go watch my video on baker's percentages. It's linked in the card above. The hydration of the three doughs will be 90, 95, and 100%. Yes, 100%, just like your starter. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. I'm on a quest to get the most out of every ingredient and my goal is to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. To make such extremely hydrated doughs more manageable, they will be made with a 40% tangs on. Otherwise, the method will be mostly as you're used to when making sourdough bread. The only real difference is that the salt is mixed in with the auto lease. When we're working with slack doughs, the added stiffness to the gluten network is just going to be a help. As I usually do, I'll be adding 20% freshly milled wheat. I just like the taste and the added texture. It's a bit more thirsty than regular bread flour, uh, so that's something to note. These are the words. This is the experiment. The formulas for all three breads are linked in the description. First, I mix the laman for all three breads together and leave it to ferment uh, until triple size. And then I mix the flour and the water for the tang zong. And I heat the mixture until it's just above 65 degrees Celsius, about 149 degrees Fahrenheit. And after that, I mix the mixture until it's smooth. Then I leave the tang zong to cool until it's 30 degrees Celsius, about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. After it's cooled, I mix the water, the flour, the salt, and the tang zong for each bread to all lease. Knit first the 90%. Yes, I know you cannot see the sign, but trust me, it says 90%. Then the 95%. And then the 100%. After the levain has tripled, I mix the levain into each bread. First the 90%. <laughs> See how prominent the sign is this time around? Then the 95%. And then the 100%. Then I leave all three doughs to rest for 30 minutes to relax the gluten. Then I do the first set of coil folds. First the 90%. As you can see, the dough is still very shaggy, but not loose at all. Then the 95%. This dough actually looks a bit more coherent already. Then the 100%. This dough actually looks pretty nice and it's very good to work with.
Then it's time for the second set of coil folds. First the 90%. Have a look at this. The first coil fold really helped this dough along. Then the 95%. Looking wonderful with excellent gluten development. Then the 100%. The gluten is progressing nicely on this one too, but the dough is a bit more slack. Nothing too bad though. Then it's time for the third set of coil folds. First the 90%. Looking good. This dough is ready for bulk. Then the 95%. This dough is a bit more slack, but absolutely ready to. Then the 100%. bit more slack, but not sticky at all. This dough is ready too. You don't even need a window pane to tell. Then the rest of the bulk goes on until the dough has risen about 50%. Then it's time for the pre-shape. First the 90%. A bit of tension building. Then the pulling over the table part. It's always interesting to me to see how a dough almost always looks like a blob when you first do this, but then it comes together rather quickly. Then the 95%. This dough is really nice. Just a little bit of popping of air bubbles. Then the 100%. This is very much looser than the other two and a bit sticky. But it seems like somewhere in the lower 80s if I hadn't used the tangs on. Then the dough balls rest on the counter for about 20 minutes to relax the gluten. Then it's time for the final shape. First the 90%. This is looking pretty tight and coherent. Then 
than the 95%. A tiny bit more slack, but also great. than the 100%. A bit more wet and sticky, but nothing too horrible. After their shape, they all go into the fridge for a nice long rest. Then the next day I heat my oven, take out the breads, and one after one I bake them. Yes, I know the 95 and the 100% get a little bit of extra time in the fridge, but my fridge is so cold that it doesn't make a difference. First the 90%, nice cross, and then a bake. Then the 95%, again, same cross, and then bake. And then the 100%, score, and bake. And after they're cooled, it's time to cut them and see the inside. As you can see, not much difference. Apart from one big hole in the 90%, the bread seems to open up a bit more for each bump in hydration though. And a 100% hydration sourdough bread, how often do you get to make that? From now on, I guess you can do it every time. All right, so that's really interesting. There's not much different in working with all three doughs. I'd say that the 90% and the 95% seemed almost the same, but the 100% seemed just a wee bit more slack, but not a lot. The breads themselves are gorgeous, crispy crust and a wonderful moist and soft crumb. Let me know in the comments if you're going to try to make an extremely hydrated dough after watching this experiment. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Mm -hmm.